Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mitt flips, where I'm a full-time eBay reseller and every 100 subscribers there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure to subscribe so you have a chance to win. Actually, the winner from the last subscriber giveaway will be announced at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. I had a fabulous sales weekend. I've got 20 orders going out. It it was it was great. I was given some good deals because I don't know about you, but for me, when sales are going good and I'm in a better mood, I'm a little more willing to come down on some prices that I normally wouldn't. Either way, happy to get some stuff moving because listings have actually picked up a little bit and I'll get to the reason why after we pull a couple orders. First thing going out on B3 is a vintage emerald green, uh, I think it's a, called a bowler hat, but it's a wool hat. I think I paid $4.99, maybe $3.99 at Salvation Army, and I got $19 free shipping. Not great money there. Took a took a pretty good offer. First class shipper, even though it's going to have to go in a box, I think that'll still end up first class. That's okay. I'm taking profits. And then this you'll recognize from uh, just the thrift haul a couple videos ago, maybe last video. I'm not really sure. It's hard to keep track of everything at one time. B5 is... Paro Clown Mime B5 B1 2 3 4 5 uh P Piero I'm pretty sure it's French but it's like a creepy mime clown bedding set I thought it was the full set but it was just the pill case and I think top sheet yep and the flat sheet I said I was going to try to get you know 24.99 29.99 free shipping somewhere in that range and that's where I listed it and then I took an offer $22 free shipping because I paid $3.50 ish and it sold within a week. So I'm okay with that. Quick flip for me sometimes will I'll take a little bit less money just because churn it out. Why not? Next up, A3 Francoma pottery mugs. A one, two, three. It's a set of two. And I went through and tightened up all of the shelves. Um, to try to make some more space because like I said listings have kind of had an uptick. I just want to optimize the space so Glassware when I do that because I do it periodically just to kind of you know fill some holes Glassware I tend to get a little overzealous with and I'll put them too close So let's hope I don't break anything in the process, but Francoma in the prairie green I sell this stuff from this set all the time and I mean all the time. I find it all the time I sell it all the time. It's a good bolo I would actually call that a bolo because you will find these if you're sourcing them. They are easy to identify. They say Francoma on them and they do sell. So for that set, $14.99 plus shipping. It's got to be going far because they paid a lot of money in shipping. Next up is Nintendo Wii Music Rock Band Guitar Hero Lot, which is not over here. I put the lot somewhere else so that I wouldn't get them mixed up. All right, this lot right here. And even though they're not all Guitar Hero and they're not all Rock Band or Band Hero or whatever you wanna call it, and this one's just a regular Wii one, I just still lotted them together. 100% would make more money selling them individually, but it's just, your ROI will go down, but your sell-through rate will go up when you sell in lots and give a discount. So $49.99 plus shipping for that lot of games. I'm happy with that. And I'll take a break right here to let you know how listings have upticked. I have brought on an employee. Employee. I hope she doesn't ever hear me say that. Jen, actually, she expressed to me that, you know, your, your stay-at-home mom, your stay-at-home dads, you get that, uh, mommy, mom, mom, mommy, you know, it gets in the back of your head, makes the hairs on your neck stand up and you just need a breather. You need a break. And so this was a great opportunity for her to help out with the business and also, you know, get a little break from the kids every once in a while, because what she's doing is she, she has taken over for the most part, all of the picture taking, because that's a part that I have to be here to do. Whereas sourcing, I could be outsourcing, and if I have the photos, if I'm waiting in line at the grocery store, I could do a listing. And I've said that a couple times. The photos is my hang up in my personal business and the way I do eBay. The photos, the cleaning the photos, that's the thing that, that slows me down, that stalls me because I have to be here to do it. All the other things I need to do for business, I need to be somewhere else. 
or even just hanging out with the kids, if we're watching a movie or something, I can do listings while that's going on if I have the photos. Like right now, I have 20 plus available listings for me to, to churn out today, which I would never be able to get through that many listings and this style of listings. If it was video games, yeah, I could go through that many, no problem. But one-offs and things like that, I, you, I couldn't do it if I had to clean picture every single item. So she's come on board doing that and it's working great. I attribute this fantastic sales week weekend to that specifically because I don't know. Um, at this point, 20% of the listings today she had listed recently and photographed recently. So it's it's good and I'm happy about it. Moving forward, I think it's just going to grow. Her ability will grow, her knowledge will grow, her comfort in doing it will grow. And I think, because to give you a little glimpse into who we are as a relationship, we're not that couple that's going to work together well, but we can work separately, efficiently and well, where, you know, if we're on top of each other, you know, we, we both, you know, work from home, lockdowns and all that. We've been on top of each other for a long time, same house, same faces. So the, uh, the way that we can uh, decompartmentalize the tasks but still work together, I think is gonna work great and I'm very excited about it. Next thing going out is uh, on left, Nike Air Jordan Six Rings Space Jam. Left, and let's see, is that, hopefully these ones that are actually in the correct box, that'd be fantastic. And it is this pair, I'll double check because many of them are very close. So we don't want to make any mistakes. That would be a big problem. And the Jordan six ring, of course, 10 and a half, because they all are, but let's check the number. Three, two, two, nine, nine, two, bingo, nailed it. And I have figured out that of the Jordans, the Six Rings is actually probably my favorite. I'm not a big Jordans guy, but if I was going to buy some Jordans, I think I would buy Six Rings. But for that pair right there, $110 plus shipping, took an offer, I think I had them 150. Next thing going out, it's a mistake, but as you've probably heard me say before, I'd, mistakes, that's, that's a fallacy. I don't see mistakes as mistakes. I see mistakes as learning opportunities. And this one was a very low, low side, very little downside uh, mistake learning experience that happened. So let's go ahead and pull it out. Actually, let me rephrase that. Let's not go ahead and pull it out because it's not here. The I'll put it up on the screen. This thing right here, it's a cute little seal. The last subscriber giveaway, the winner, that's the prize she selected. And so I sent a box it up, sent it out with a note and a couple of stickers and a mag couple of magnets. And it wasn't right after, but I would say within two hours after, I made the mistake of not removing the listing immediately, but I thought I had a little bit of time. And so it sold two hours later to someone else. Of course I didn't pack panic because it was it's a low dollar item it wasn't a lot of issue no matter what and i have enough feedback that my account could absorb a ding like a cancellation or something like that so none of it concerned me but it was a learning experience because i got to go through the process of what would i do if this situation came up and what i did and what i would suggest people do if your account would take a major hit from it if it's not going to just you could just explain it to them actually first thing you would do is ask them hey i made a mistake do you mind if i cancel this order and if they say yes that actually covers you as far as canceling it um, because it would be a uh, buyer requested cancellation but instead what i did is i went to ebay i found the exact same item and i drop shipped it i purchased it with my own money. Actually, I purchased it with the money that the person bought it for, with the money the person bought it from me with, and I purchased a different one, and I put in their address and sent it forward, and then I took 
because they shipped it out first thing this morning, which is great. I did check out the sellers. There was three or four sellers and I went and saw which one looked the most responsible, the most professional. And that's the one I went with. And it was actually cheaper than what they had paid me. So I didn't lose out any money. That's, that's also a plus. Again, low dollar, so I wasn't really worried about it. And I just drop shipped it forward to them. And as of right now, it seems like no issue at all. It actually is getting mailed out faster than if they had bought it from me. So it's a total wash for me, but definitely a great learning experience. Definitely a good reminder that if you do sell something on a different platform, if you cross post, or if you happen to pull an item out because it breaks, you pull it out because it's just dead stock and you don't want to deal with it anymore, you put it in your garage sale, whatever the reason happens to be, the very first thing you should do is remove it from your store. Lesson learned, moving forward, that will be something that sticks with me. And I'm very glad it happened on a, you know, cheap item and it wasn't a big deal and it all just seems to be hunky-dory. And next thing going out, it's a book, A Song of Sixpence. Song of Sixpence. And this person really wanted this book and they wanted it cheap. I think it was listed $7.99 free shipping. And the first offer they sent me was like $3. And I ended up landing on $4.99 free shipping. I still make, you know, 50 cents in that area because the books were free. But it's better off just that one can go. It can get off the shelf. And they really wanted it. I'm happy the books make it to somebody who wants them and not into a landfill or a burn barrel. I'm, I'm very pleased to move them on to somebody that actually wants them. All right, next up is vintage 1967 Pollyanna. And this one took a lot of thinking and a lot of pondering to decide if I was gonna take their offer or not. And I'll kind of walk you through the process because I think that'll be helpful. And what I got for that, that is complete. I did have to order uh, one piece for it. There is the box that the stuff comes in, the little cardboard side, the piece that's usually in the side that's missing. And the two of the, the dice shakers are actually cracked. And still, I paid four bucks for it, I think, five bucks for it. I got $75 plus shipping, and that's low for this game. If you sell this game, do not sell it for $75 plus shipping. You should be selling it for $125-ish, somewhere in that range. And the reason I sold mine for $75, because I had it listed $134.99. From the time I listed it till the time it sold, some other seller posted one in much better condition than mine, for I think $100 plus shipping. It might have even been $80 plus shipping. So I don't know what they were comping it on. I don't know what their reason was, but they had a better one than the ones available and then priced it well below the ones on market. I, I don't know. I'm not in the mind of that seller, but what that did for me, because this is still kind of a long tail item, not too bad. But when they sent me the offer, I said, oh, that's a huge, huge offer because 135 to 75, that's that's over fifty dollars. That's sixty five dollars, um, I think. Quick math. So what I did is they sent me the offer. I looked. There was currently one auction running that was around 75, 80 bucks. There was the one I, I spoke of that was listed for, I think, eighty dollars plus shipping. And so the market kind of had flipped on me and dictated that that was the price because mine is not in great shape compared to the other ones. It's in worse shape. The offer was fair according to current market and I'm not in the mindset of, of hanging on to things long-term for those extra dollars because I have the ability to take dollars and exponentially grow those if I have the dollars. I can't exponentially grow the money that I'll get for this if it's sitting on the shelf, only if I have the dollars. So I will take that $75 and turn it into more money. So that's why, and it, it took, I, I spent 10 or 15 minutes going back and forth. I had a couple words with the, the buyer. I had countered at one point, because I think their first offer was 73. I counted with 99.99, they came back with 75. So I knew their line was right there. So I said, okay, moving on, let's go ahead and take the money. And that's again, I was in a good mood, sales were coming in. Next up, glad to see another one go. I was getting a little worried. It is a light blue vintage Chubbs 
baby white container and I will have to check but I think this is what I was calling white blue. I did a poor job of labeling the containers after I decided what they were called in the multi-quantity listing because there is blue, light blue, uh, sky blue, and baby blue. And I think this is what I was calling light blue. So I'll have to double check that. Uh, but for that, $11.99 free shipping. This will go first class. I have to sell one more, I think. One, two, three. One more, I think, and I will be have paid for the whole lot of them. And then I still have this significant amount to go through. I think that's still gonna end up being a long-term good buy to possibly a great buy. Next up, took an offer vint on C3, vintage Lloyd's radio, C123. And this is one of those things that I moved to make space and then shoved it behind stuff and then it's a pain to get it out. Eh, I'm gonna fire that guy. He's just no good at his job. All right, that right there, vintage Lloyd's AM FM. Works great, sounds okay. <laughs> and I got $20 plus shipping on that. I think I had it listed for 30. Might've been 25. Next up on A4 is a Corningware. F12C, one, two, three, four, F12C. Nope, not that one. And it does say I have two of them. So I'm thinking the other one's in that bubble wrap over there. But this is one of them right here, F12C. And I'll double check to make sure that it is the fluted version, the ribbed version. And it appears, no, it is not. So let me, good thing I checked. It's gotta be this one in this package then. But why does it say I have two when I clearly do not have two? I must have not noticed that the other one had the fluting or didn't have the fluting. So let me go ahead. Or maybe I made a mistake shipping them out. I don't know. All right, and you'll see this one does not have the fluting and this one does. So I will have to correct that in the listing because I do have it as a multiple quantity, but I don't want people to have a reason to complain about what it comes down to. So I'll have to switch up the picture on that one. I shall sit this into the photo station. So I remember to do that. And for that, I got $8.99 plus shipping. And this, surprisingly, will be the most difficult thing I have to pack today. Maybe the radio, but probably this. Even though 20 sales, not that bad packing. All right, next thing up is Nike Air Jordan 13 Retro White Lucky on the desk. Here we go, Air Jordan Retro in the Lucky Green. Uh, it's a DB6537113, and we'll pop the box and double check. And there they are, right there. And they do have a little stain right there, but oh, let me check to make sure. Well, it's pictured in the listing, but it's not, I don't know, it's not technically pictured in the listing, so that, it bums me out a little bit. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I hope there's no issue there. Um, let me pull up the listing just so I can show you what I'm talking about. It's, I don't know. <laughs> Not, uh, could end up with a problem here. Because as you can see, the black spot is in the picture, but I didn't, normally I would, and you see it's still, you can see it in the picture there as well. But normally I would add a specific picture to point that out. So that must have got missed by Jen when she was photoing or I missed the photo when we were exchanging them. I'm not sure. So hopefully that's not an issue. We'll, we'll see. But weird thing about these ones is I thought that eBay authentication for the shoes was only required over $200. But those ones... To get back on track, sold for $125 plus shipping. So maybe over $100 they can request it. I'm still kind of foggy on how the authentication process completely works, but I think it's it's been it's gone completely smooth and no issues. But I thought the cutoff was $200. I'll have to double check on that. But $125 plus shipping. I really hope that doesn't cause a problem. It could. 
Worst case scenario, it'll get returned and I'll have to take one more additional pitcher and relist them. And I did take a pretty significant um, offer on those two. I think I took $25 off. If they come back, they will not be getting a discount the next time because I'll have to recoup the shipping costs. Uh, next up, B2A is a TDK blank media cassette. And I think it was this one, the SD110, which I left the sticker on. So I must have had a multi-quantity. I did have a multi-quantity. So I'll peel that sticker off and send it out. And you can see I paid 25 cents. And for that, I got $9.99 free shipping. And that the reason, the reason I got 999 free shipping is because this is a high bias. All sealed media will sell, but the high bias cassettes you will get better money for. The high bias you can sell individually. The rest of them, to show you some examples, like these, you would want to probably sell in a lot, which I think it's probably a lot of three. This one just happens to be flipped around but i'm pretty sure this will be a lot of three um but when the, you have the high bias you can sell them individually but what you can't do is send them media mail let me rephrase that what you shouldn't do and what you're not supposed to do is send them media mail you 100 could that's your decisions to make but you're not supposed to um next thing up pretty cool is uh b6 i won't get it down right now but it is this vintage He-Man Castle Gray Skull Master of the Universe. It's just the shell, shell only, no add-ons, no no bits and pieces that go with it. And for that, I got $33.99 local pickup. I think I sent out an offer. Maybe they sent me an offer. I don't remember. But a local um, reseller, which actually I you know. You know you do it. I peeped at their store real quick. They have a large store in me. Looks like they've been doing it much longer than I have. But very cool. I love local pickup. And I gave a, a decent offer, or I, or I accepted a decent um, offer, because local pickup, I won't have to pay final value fees on shipping. I won't have to pack it. It won't cost me any shipping materials. So all in all, local pickup is the bee's knees, $33.99. I don't think they're picking it up today, but either way, glad to have that go because that will clear up a large spot, a large footprint that I could replace with many, many small things, hopefully. But for that, I I might have paid a buck for it, a couple bucks for it. I got it in a huge lot of stuff that I bought at every year. We have a local Humane Society sale and it takes up like the whole fairgrounds, it's giant. I, I bought a carload of stuff. I don't know how much I paid for that because it all gets bundled into one price. And then next up, another one of those things I picked up very recently, it is C5 Toyota Corolla charcoal formats. And again, I took a pretty decent offer, but it's because quick flip, and I would rather not have these on my shelf long term because it takes up a lot of space. Let's just get them moving. But those right there, official OEM product, Toyota Corolla. I paid $350, I think, for the back seat ones and $350, so seven, eight bucks ish for all of them. And I got $44.99 plus shipping. And I think I had them listed for 60 plus shipping, maybe even 65 plus shipping, but quick flip, get it moving. I've been contemplating ever since I listed these. Two tips. Actually, let's bring it on back. Time for tip of the day. It's been a minute since I did a tip of the day. Let's go. Tip of the day. When you're photographing something large, something bigger than your normal photographing area, best thing that I found, and it worked perfectly, I thought of it as I was showing off my thrift haul, is I just took the mat, I threw them right here on the ground, took a photo, and then I used Photo Room. It's an app. It's a free app. You can pay for it to lose all the bells and whistles, but it works great. And so I did that. That was such a, it was a dream. It's a dream because something like this is very awkward. So photo room, you should have it. You don't have to use it for every photo. You don't have to use it for every listing. I've been using it for ones that it makes sense. I only, 
can't say only, but for most of the time, I only do it for, or for most of the time, I, I use it for the first picture, just the cover photo, and then the rest, I don't bother. Because for me, as a buyer, I don't trust it. If there's a listing and I can't see the edges on something, I just, because people don't bother with the drop shadows and all that kind of outline stuff. So it's like, it's like when you're buying on Amazon and it's a stock photo. That's what it feels like, even though they're not a stock photo, it's a photo of the actual item. So I think people like the fact that they get a good, clean, crisp picture. It works in the Google algorithm, all that kind of stuff. And then when they're actually looking at details, they can look at the real pictures and see that it's a real thing. As a buyer, that's what I like. So that's what I'm going with. And then the other part of that is I've been racking my brain on how I'm going to ship them. I was thinking maybe I'd roll them and put them in, in like a, maybe a USPS shipping tube. I don't know. They might be over the length for, actually, if I went the other way, they wouldn't be. So that might still work. If it doesn't, what I am going to do is take a, I'll go, I got to go pick up some, like the, the really thick mill leaf bags, the garbage bags, the ones that you can, you can put sticks and stuff in them and they won't rip, um, where they're the thickness of a good poly bag. And I, I'll get one of those and I'll use it just like a poly bag, just like an oversized poly bag, not the ones that have the stretch bag, not the trash bag that's just under your counter. Get one specific. They have a drawstring. I would say don't use it. Or if they do have a drawstring, maybe maybe cut it out. I don't know. Just for the appeal of it. So people don't go, ah, they sent it in a trash bag. But for something like this, it really makes sense. Because you can't hurt it, but you got to put it in something. And a box doesn't make sense at all. So maybe I'll either roll it this way and see if I can fit it in a tube, which I don't think I can. Or I'm going to use a heavy duty, like a four mil, five mil. I'll, I'll, if I think of it, I'll take a picture of the ones I buy and I'll put them on the screen and just, yeah, just use it as an oversized poly bag. I think that's what I'm going to go with. And then next up, I used to buy a ton of these. A1 is a vintage Corning Thermique. And of course... I said, oh, this thing hasn't sold them forever. Let's just shove it to the back of the shelf. It's really hard to get to. But it's a carafe um, pitcher. And I had to animate it for you so you know what a pitcher does. But I did, I used to buy every one of those I saw when I first started. It was just, when you don't have a lot of sales or sourcing um, experience, you glom onto the things you do know. So as soon as I saw that one of those was kind of selling, I bought a bunch of them, but I was paying three, four, five bucks for them and selling them for $12.99 plus shipping. And they were sitting for a significant amount of time. They weren't a fast seller by any means. I would still probably pick them up for me at a buck at a garage sale, but not at the $4.99, $5.99, whatever you happen to get them at a Goodwill or a Salvation Army. That's a pass. But for a dollar, for 50 cents, it's still okay. And again, something you will find, can find, you could go out sourcing today and find three of those in different styles. It's good stuff if you need stuff, but I don't need stuff. <laughs> and then next up, another pair of shoes on left, Nike Jordan Mars. And so it's going to be hopefully in a box that matches. Okay, it's not. So give me a second to sort through these. All right, found them, not too bad. Nike Air jo Nike Jordan Mars 270 black and red they're in okay shape compared to the others these were definitely worn more than most one of the keywords that I I have an issue with you know people using keywords just because another listing says it but one of the ones that they use when they're talking about black and red for Jordans is they just call it bread b r e d I think that's silly cuz why wouldn't you just write black and red and then it covers both, whatever. I don't run their store, so I don't have to worry about that. But for those $75 plus shipping, good to go, love it. And I think those were listed $99.99 plus shipping. And just to remind you, I did not think any except for I think two pairs were worth more than $100 and most I thought were worth less than $50, something that like, 40, 50, 60 dollar range was what I comped out all the shoes at. So I, and at this point I have paid for the buy plus. So I'm already in the profit. 
So let's let's go. Next up is SpongeBob SquarePants PSP right here. And for that game, I got $12.99 free shipping. Next up is a VHS Vintage 1994 Doctor Who. That used to be one of the ones I had out in front, but it's back here now. But yes, the Mask of Mandragora, Doctor Who from CBS Fox. And for that VHS, I got $12.99 free shipping. That's great money for a VHS that I probably paid a quarter or less for. And then last thing going out, Car 15 is a vintage 1982 Hot Wheels. Um, it's a semi-truck. Haha. -ha. There we go. Car 15. It is a semi-truck. And it did, I think it had like a broken stack or something. Or maybe the mirrors were broken off. I thought it had some damage somewhere. But not really positive. I had that listed, I think, $19.99 free shipping. Took $12 free shipping. That's great for a single car. I love it. And that's from my childhood toy collection. So cost of zero. Wonderful sales day. Not too bad for packing, nothing extreme. If I can avoid it, I won't send anything uh, USPS or FedEx, so I only have to make one stop. So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to send these USPS, you know, in a financially responsible way. But if not, you know, I gotta make an extra trip, no big deal. But this is, you know, to walk through real quick, cause I don't do a ton of packing videos anymore. I try to mix in as much info as I can about packing. Cause that is, and I repeat, that is the most important thing about running an eBay business is the packing and the shipping. It's where you make or break your store. So I have the boxes that I ordered specifically for these shoe boxes. So just throw it in the box, throw it in the box, throw it in the box. This will go in a USPS box. I will take two 1092s, 1095s, something like that. And I will make a Franken box for that. I will do a loop of medium bubble or big bubble, and then that send it out that way. I'll actually do a loop of small bubble first to seal it, to keep it tight, and then big bubble or medium bubble over that. Poly bag, uh, whatever box I throw them in. USPS box, and actually this will be in a USPS box as well. Media mail. This might have to go FedEx, but I don't think so. I'll probably put that in some type. I'll probably do like a Franken box with two shoe boxes, two USPS shoe boxes, not a regular shoe box. Polybagger bubble mailer, polybagger bubble mailer, polybagger bubble mailer, USPS shoe box, possibly. So, I mean, it's, it's not that difficult. I'll try to make some more dedicated shipping videos because if I feel that that's the most important thing, I should probably be conveying that a little better. Also, you might have noticed recently, I have tried some new editing styles, just a little bit of extra, just a little bit of extra. I'm not sure if that's increasing the enjoying the viewing experience or I'm wasting my time. So if you have any preferences on the last couple videos or you saw some things that I did that you liked or didn't like, please let me know. All right, time to pick a winner. Um, copied in the video here, filter duplicate users, get YouTube comments. And there are 46 individual commenters. So that is the most yet. Best of luck to everybody. And again, I appreciate very much every subscriber and good luck. No way. <laughs> Siggy must be the luckiest YouTuber, YouTube watcher in the world. She won the last giveaway and here she is, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Go Siggy. Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other.